and welcome to Pre-K with Miss K. Today I am joined by Mr. Cat. <laughs> we are so excited, day two of celebrating birthday. birthday! Our final day, we have some really fun activities coming up. Let's get started with our calendar and say the days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yesterday was Wednesday, today is the the Thursday. Guess what? Today is going to be the very last day of the month. Let's figure out what month that is. We start with January. January, February, March, April. Okay, what number comes next? 28, 29, 30. 30 starts with a TH, like we learned at last lesson. The, the, the 30. And today is the very last day of April. Today is Thursday. April 30th, 2020. Check outside and see what the weather is like at your house today. Let's check our schedule. We have circle time, social studies. We're talking about how many birthdays there are every single day. Math, we're gonna be using some silly string. We're gonna be doing a T chart for writing, some pros and cons about birthdays, things that are good. Maybe things that aren't so great about birthdays. We have an experiment, another balloon and candle experiment. We're going to see if a balloon will pop when it gets close to the candle. We have our sight word today, a special poem, another one by Shel Silverstein. And we'll have our charade and our joke. Let's get started. Our color today is the color white. White. That is our color today. Our shape today has four equal sides. Do you know what shape has four equal sides? Can you guess, Mr. Cat, what shape has four equal sides? Uh, square. Okay, let's check. Our four equal sides is a... Square. A square has four equal sides. I'm going to undo my square. How about we spell it? S-Q-U-A-R-E. Spell square. All right. Our number today starts with an S. Number? Seven. Seven. Let's count with our fingers to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, we're going to add five plus two equals seven. And our letter today makes the sound S. We have our capital S and lowercase s. Great work. For our cards today, what would a pilot use? Think about that. Do you remember we had the pilot? What would a pilot use? Something on the top or bottom? Bottom. On the bottom. On the left or the right? Left. On the left, of course, a pilot drives the airplane. Thumbs up if you have been How on an airplane before. How could a pilot drive vegetables? That's why we definitely didn't pick that one. I have something s s silly. What's wrong with my phone? There's a banana. Can you use a banana for a phone? No. no, that is so silly. I have an action verb. What is he doing? He is swinging. Thumbs up if you like to swing. Our animal we're learning facts about today is a dog. Did you know all dogs are direct descendants of wolves? Dogs can hear sounds 250 yards away, but people can't even hear 25 yards away. Some scientists believe that a dog's sense of smell is a million times greater than our own. Wow, that would be a good sense of smell. And the Greyhound is the world's fastest breed of dog. It runs up to 45 miles an hour. Those are some fun facts about dogs. Goodbye, doggy. We have our good manners today. What would be a, our best choice for having good manners if you lose a game? If your team loses the game, is it a good choice to throw down your mitt, stomp off, and have an angry face? Or is it the best choice in good manners to have good sportsmanship? 
and tell them, good game, play again next time. Which is exhibiting good sportsmanship skills and good manners? Do we throw our equipment down or do we tell them, good game? Good game. Yeah, we say good game. Sometimes it's hard in our mind to lose. It's not fun to lose, but it's still important when you're playing games to have good sportsmanship. We're gonna stretch. We're gonna stretch like a palm tree. You're gonna start down squatting and grow up, 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 and stretch on your tippy toes. Just like a palm tree. Great stretching. I have our little listening card. Let's listen for the details. Are you ready? Judy wants to go to Sweet Treats Bakery this morning to pick out her birthday cake. Judy wants to go to Sweet Treats Bakery this morning to pick out her birthday cake. Question one, who wants to go to the bakery? Uh, a girl. Judy, right? What was the name of the bakery? Remember that detail? The Sweet Treats Bakery. When does Judy want to go to the bakery? This Friday. This, this morning. And why does she want to go to the bakery? To uh, pick out a cake for her birthday. That's right, to pick out her birthday cake. Couple qu questions here. When do the trees grow new leaves? What season, when? When do trees grow new leaves? Spring. In the spring, thumbs up, it's springtime right now. Look outside, are you seeing some more leaves on the trees? I know we are. In our category, a frog, a kangaroo, and a rabbit are all what? Animal. That can do what? It's more specific of a category. Hop. Animals that can hop or jump. Last two, wiggle your fingers. And pretend you can fly, stand up. Pretend you can fly, do a little break. Pretend you can fly. For our social studies today, we are going to talk about birthdays. How many birthdays do you think there are in the whole world every single day? Mm -hmm. Not bad. Look at this gigantic number. There are about 17 million 700,000 birthdays every single day, according to the Farmer's Almanac. 17,700,000 birthdays every single day. Oh my God. That is a lot of birthdays. How many do you think there are in just the United States? Just the United States. In just the United States, there are 814 thousand birthdays almost every single day. Wow. Those are two big numbers. For our math today, we are going to be using some silly string and talking about which numbers are greater than, which ones are less than. We're going to move over to our other area. Let's go. Hi friends and welcome back. For our math today, I'm going to be putting up two numbers. And then my friend, Mr. Cat here, is gonna spray, depending on what question I ask. I'm gonna move a couple of numbers down. What number is that? Five. Five and? Two. And two, okay, Mr. Cat's ready. You're gonna point it at it. My question is, which number is less than the other one? Two. You gotta keep it back. Okay, spray. It's hard. You gotta aim it the right way. <laughs> Good try, Mr. Cat. Okay. Which number is less than the other one? You point. I'll spray. Two. Got it. <laughs> Get our next numbers. We have number. What number, Mr. Cat? Nine. Nine and four. Four. Which number is greater than? Nine is greater than nine. Got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Buddy, what numbers do we have? Six, Six and seven. Which number is less than the other one? Six is less than seven. Six. Got it. Okay. Let's do. Okay. What are our two numbers? Eight, Eight and, and ten. ten. Which number is greater than ten. the other one? Ten is greater than eight. Ten. Got it. <laughs> and one more. Which number is less than the other one? Four. Four is less than five. Boop, boop. Got it. Thumbs up if you had fun with silly string. Ready? Ah! All right. Wow! <laughs> go back over and do some writing pros and cons. Hi friends, wasn't that fun to do our math with silly string today? Up next we have our writing. <laughs> our friend Johnny came to celebrate birthday today. Okay, we have our birthdays tea chart. We're going to be talking about pros and cons of our birthday. Let's come up with two things for each. All right, let's think. Mr. Cat, what would be something good, a pro, about having your birthday? Present. Presents. All right, be thinking. What would be a con or something negative or something that's maybe not great about your birthday? Think about that. Maybe it could be that it only happens how many times a year? Why? Yeah, maybe something that you don't like about it is it only happens one time a year. That would be a con. Is there another pro? What would be another positive part for you about your birthday? Maybe throwing a party. <laughs> Having a party would be a pro. What could be another con for birthdays? How about if somebody lives far away? Is that hard? Maybe you have family members who have their birthdays far away and you can't go and see them on their birthday, right? So that could be a con is people that are far away. So this is how we would organize our thoughts into a T-chart. Again, today we did pros and cons. Some good things about birthdays might be presents and parties. And some cons might be that it only happens one time a year. And it's hard if you have friends and family that are far away. Great job using our T-chart. Let's see. Up next is our experiment. We're going to be using a balloons, two balloons and a candle. We're going to see what happens as we put the balloons closer to the candle. One balloon's going to be filled with the air. The other one's going to have water. What do you think will happen? Let's go back over to our science area. Hi friends and welcome back. Are you ready for our experiment? Our question is, what will happen when you put the balloon close to the fire of the candle? We have one balloon that's empty and one balloon that has water. If I put an empty balloon close to the fire, what do you think might happen? It will pop. You think it might pop? Okay, let's see. As it gets closer, the latex is going to heat up and pop. Could it surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> But when we have the balloon that has water in it, what do you think will happen, Mr. Cat? It this, will not pop. It will not pop. Let's see. Touches it. What happened? Did the balloon pop? No. No. Well, this mark is carbon from the candle, but the balloon that was full of water did not pop. 
because the water helps transfer the heat and the rubber of the balloon didn't get hot enough to pop. So it didn't pop at all. It just made the mark from the candle. So that is so exciting. If you have an empty balloon and put it close to the candle, what happens? It will. It pops. But if you have water in the balloon close to the candle, it did not pop because the water helps transfer the heat and the rubber of the balloon did not get hot enough to pop. Thumbs up if you like our experiment. Good job. We're gonna go back over for our sight word and our poem. We are ready for our sight words. Our new word today is spelled N-O-T. Let's sound it out. N-A-T. Not. Not. Our word is not. Let's go through our other words and then we'll see our sentence. We have not, big, have, it, like, is, in, go, you, see, to, I. Those are all our sight words. Let's look at our sentence that has not in it. I need you to help me read. It is not my birthday. It is not my birthday today. Is it your birthday? Yes, it is, or no, it is not. It's for our poem today by Shel Silverstein. It's about birthday. We're gonna be looking for our sight word not. Get your binoculars and be looking through as we read, looking for our sight word not. The title is birthday. Ready to help me read? The party clown was away at the lake. The toy store man was not awake. It was not. The bakery man was out of cake. I hope you like this birthday snake. Uh-oh, do you think you would want a birthday snake or a birthday cake? I think. Thumbs up for birthday cake. I don't think I'd want a birthday snake. Goodbye, birthday snake. Oh, only if he would bring me the cake. I would say I do not want a birthday snake. All of our rhyming words in our story were lake, awake, cake, and snake. Great rhyming. To end the day today, we have our charade and our joke. Mr. Cat's going to act it out for you. Can you guess what it is? Good job. What is it, Mr. Cat? Hula hoop. A hula hoop. That's right. Using your hips for a hula hoop. Okay. Our joke today is what do you call a funny snake? Like our birthday cake snake. Cake. What do we call a funny snake? Hmm. What do we call our funny snake? We call him he's a hysterical. <laughs> he is hysterical. Thanks for joining us, friends. See you next time.